All right, guys, how's it going? So today we are going to be uh, showing you how to create the uh, working drawings for our acrylic uh, picture stand. Now, um, in order to do this, you need to have all of the part files for this thing already drawn. Now, I have a folder with them on my desktop with all of my parts already made. Um, you may need to see a different video if you uh, still need help making a part or making an assembly or a presentation view. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to recreate this set of four different sheets. So because these are on a piece of paper, we're going to need to make a new file on Inventor that's called a .idw file, which we've made before. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up Inventor here. Um, down over here, we're going to click on WHS 1819A IDW. If this is a, a different school year, just pick the most recent one and uh, double click it. If you get any error messages or windows that pop up, hit either skip all or yes um, and try and click through them. In this case, I don't see any that uh, popped up for me. So anyway, right now we just loaded one sheet. Um, we can see it in our project browser over here. It says sheet one. But in the case of our working drawings, we need four of these. So to make more, we need to right click somewhere over here and click on New Sheet. Right click, New Sheet, and the last one. Now we have four different blank sheets over here. Now the one that highlights in white is the one that's currently active. So if you like double click sheet three, you'll see that that highlights in white. That's the one that we're looking at. Now we're going to start with sheet one and uh, start putting some some views on there. So again, we're trying to make this, right? So this first title page has an assembled view, which is an IAM file, an exploded view, which is a .ipn file, and a parts list, which we'll get to in a second. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add this IAM file right here. So to do that, I'm going to go up to Place Views, click on Base, Click on the magnifying glass here if it doesn't already load for us and find our folder. And remember, I'm looking for my IAM file. So you can see a preview in the corner here. I hit open, um, hit OK, hit yes, and we should be able to see my file. Now, I don't want a front view. I'd like to get a good overall view of my object, so I'm going to look at an isometric view. So I'm going to click on the house. If your view does not show up like this, you're going to need to see a different video which shows you how to fix the uh, cube to match your part. So if I click and hold, I can move this to the corner of the page. Um, I can also change the scale depending on how large I want it. If I look at my print here, this looks, this looks pretty big. So maybe I'll change my scale to 1, to What if we just do 1? Scale 1 to 1. That's too big. What if we try 1 to 3? Uh, too small. Let's keep it 1 to 2. I think we're all happy with, uh, with this size. Now, if we hit OK, it's going to put my object right on the screen. And I can uh, click and drag the red lines around it to move it to the location that I want. Okay. Now the location isn't super, uh, you know, important, but you should know how to move it around if you need to. So the next view we're going to put on is this exploded view. Now you'll see these little circles here identifying the parts. These are called balloons. We're going to put these on afterwards. So we're going to first put this view on here, which shows all the pieces exploded. This would mimic what you might find in like a Lego package when you're trying to put Legos together or something uh, like an IKEA assembly uh, booklet. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's go into Inventor. Now again, we're going to place another view. We're going to click on Base View, click on the magnifying glass, and now we are going to find our IPN file. Now I made two of these files. Um, because I was just screwing around with the presentation file. So I'm going to click on uh, this first one. And you can see a preview down here of all your parts pulled uh, apart or exploded. Um, click OK, hit Yes. You might not get windows that pop up. Ah, so look, my file right here did not show up as an exploded view. So my file was incorrect. So I'm going to put a different one on here. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass, and I think I did it with number two. Let's see. Open. Hit OK. Yes. Hit OK. Yeah, here we go. Now I have exploded parts. If you wondered why that happened, or if this happened to you, where you brought in an IPN file and it wasn't exploded, uh, you're going to have to see a different video, and I'll show you how to fix that. 
Okay, so now we want to try and mimic this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this corner of my cube to get an isometric view. And I'm going to change the scale to maybe one, two, three, to make it a little bit larger, maybe one to two. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click OK. Okay. So now we can see all the four components that are on my sheet. Now, I need to label these things. That's why we have these balloons right here. Um, if you have an assembly of like 500 pieces, you want to know which pieces are which. And even though there's only four pieces here, um, this is kind of showing us how somebody might do this in the real world. So in order to make balloons and to tell us what parts we have here, we're going to need to go to the Annotate tab. We're going to need to click on balloon. Click on the view that you want to balloon. Okay, So it can be any piece, any part from this view right here. Not over here, over here. Okay, Click. And it's going to say, uh, we're going to grab information from this assembly file. Just hit OK. Hit OK again. And now it's going to want me to start putting balloons. Now the trick with this is, it, once you left click, it's going to allow you to keep left clicking. We don't want to have these balloons just bouncing back and forth and back and forth with all these different lines. So after you left click, you should right click and hit continue and your balloon will stick. So let's click on this one. So left click, left click, right click, continue. And that kind of saves it. Left click, left click, right click, continue. Left click, left click, right click, continue. And now we have all of our balloons done. Now. I need to be careful because my balloon button is still highlighted. So I'm going to hit the escape key on my keyboard. And now we're deactivated. Just like any other file, we did a lot of work here. So I want to save it. So I'm going to go up to save. I'm going to name this thing. I'm going to put it on my desktop in my appropriate folder here, acrylic picture stand. I'm going to name it acrylic stand. And I'm going to name this acrylic stand working drawing. Okay and hit save. And I know I didn't make it a project file. That's OK. Hit OK. And now everything is saved so far. The last thing that we need to do for this title page is we need to add the parts list. Now, our parts list consists of um, different item numbers, which corresponds to our balloons, the quantity of each item, and the uh, part name or number over here. Okay. So let's go back into Inventor. And I'm going to go up to Annotate here. And this is the same area that we put in our balloons. And next to Balloon, over here, there's a button called Table. And it gives us a whole bunch of different tables to make. We're going to click on Parts List. Okay. Now, this window comes up here. And a lot of you guys get used to just clicking through these or hitting OK. Um, we need to read some of these things. So the first thing it's asking is, what is the source of the Parts List? Well, we want to click on this button here and this view, because that's where all my pieces are located. And now you can see that that kind of fills itself in. Let's click on, uh, it says direction to wrap the table to the left. That's OK. Let's click on OK now, and let's just see what we get. So I hit OK, and now all of a sudden I have this big old rectangle. Um, and I'm moving my mouse around, and nothing's showing up. As soon as I click, it's going to um, you know, go onto our screen. So after I clicked on my parts list and I put it into my screen, um, you need to be careful when you click on it and try to move it. So for example, if I hover over like a the letter or a, uh, or a name, you can see that there's those four arrows that show up. I can click, hold, and drag it, and it allows me to move it. But sometimes if you click on the wrong spot, like here, and you try and move it, it's going to extend and, uh, and minimize your cell length. Um, so just be careful what you click on. Now, we want to mimic the one that's shown in my example <clears throat> right here. So it says item, quantity, and part number. Now, we need to make ours match that. Item, quantity, part number. This one says description, too. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of some of these columns on our parts list and kind of make them fit whatever kind of parts list you want to make. So if you hover over one of these uh, names, just like we're going to click and drag and move it, and then you double click, you'll see this little editing window comes up. Now, what I don't like about this window is that there's all these buttons here, 
but they don't tell you what to do unless you hover over them. We want to get rid of this column. So to do that, if we go all the way to the left side here, column chooser is the button I want you to click. And over here on the right hand side, these are the default columns that are generated when you make a table. On the left side here, these are all the different columns that we can add in which Inventor will pre-fill in data and information from your file. In this case, we want to get rid of something instead of adding more properties. So all we need to do is go over here and click on Description, because we don't want that one, and click on Remove. And it kind of put it right back in this list over here. So these are our only active things. We're going to click on OK, hit Apply, hit OK, and you'll see that we are now stuck with just um, three different columns here. Now you know you may realize that the print that I gave you gives us four different items here. Notice it's seeing the left side and the right side as two different items, which this is incorrect. If you did it properly, um, it'll show that the side pieces are the same, and they're both item three because they're the same geometry, but there's just two of them. Okay. Perfect, so that's how you do the first page of this acrylic sign project.